Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And the Bible says, and his mother called his name Jabez. Now, if you read it like this from the KJV or the modern translations, you would not get the full picture. These two, the whole story of Jabez here is captured in just two verses. Um, and is broken into three phases. Number one, it starts with the end of the story. Then number two, it starts with the condition. The condition that Jabez found himself as a result of his birth and the proclamations of his mother. Then the next verse, verse 10, tells us what he did to change the tides. So let's go back to verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. That was the end of Jabez's life. But the Bible says the beginning of the story is that the mother called his name Jabez, meaning sorrow, pain, because I bear him in sorrow. Are we following the story now? So Jabez from verse 9 was a gentleman who grew up experiencing all kinds of woes in his life. And the Bible says the mother went through excruciating pain in childbirth and in anger and annoyance she called the child Jabez. Verse 10, the Bible says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, called on the God of Israel. The Bible does not say Jabez lamented over his situation helplessly. The Bible did not say Jabez went around in hopelessness and despair. The Bible says somewhere along the lines of Jabez's growth process, he found out that there was a God in heaven who could change the narrative of men's lives. Is somebody learning now? And the Bible says when he found out whoever it was that taught Jabez about God, the Bible does not tell us, at least not in this chapter, but then we know that Jabez eventually found out that there is a God in heaven who is the God of Israel. Then the Bible says, Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Number one, I'm establishing our prayer points tonight. This is the whole miracle service tonight. Number two, enlarge my coast. Enlarge my coast. Number three, let your hand be with me. Then number four, that thou would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. I like the ending part. And God granted him that which he requested. Please look up, look up, look up. Don't assume you understand what you just read. The Bible never said God granted him what he wanted. The Bible never said God granted him what he cried for. The Bible it never said God granted him what he needed. It says God granted him what he requested. Is someone learning now? So, let's discuss Jabez very briefly. Number one, I have taught you here and the word Jabez means he makes sorrowful. That means the memory of that individual brings pain and causes pain. Jabez can be a person and Jabez can be a situation. Now, um, please look up. Let me, we're not teaching tonight. We have the weeks following to teach. But I want to show you something in the Bible. Every name, every name you see in the Bible is not just the name of an individual. Every name you see in the Bible is a spiritual pathway that if followed will produce a kind of believer. Are we together? So when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Mary, Samson, all of these names in the Bible, they are names of individuals. 
but in those names are also spiritual pathways that if followed will produce a kind of believer are we together now so the name Abraham is the name of an individual but that name is also a capture of a spiritual pathway that can turn anybody to become a father of nations so the Bible says look unto Abraham your father are we together now look unto him does not mean just see him no are we together so when you see Sarah Isaac Jacob all of these lay your hands on your head and declare that your name will be a pathway to knowing God go ahead and pray declare it from the depth of your heart Lord in my lifetime my name will also be a spiritual pathway that will help men to know God in a certain way. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. So if you understand what I said now, you will know that Jabez, look up please. Jabez was not just the name of a person. Jabez is a capture of how men can turn the tides of curses, of yokes, of ill speakings to become a life of honor and dignity and grace. Are we together now? So the whole story here is not just a revelation of a young man who was seemingly cursed by his mother, who found his way out to glory. No, there is a spiritual pathway. And this is what I want you to get. So number one, the prayer of Jabez. Give us verse 9. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Who taught, okay, verse 10. Who taught Jabez, excuse me, who taught Jabez that the cure for the curse, the cure for a life of limitation, it, that in all your getting, when you are tired of going around life, when you are tired of failure, among the many things that must be introduced to your life is the blessing. Is someone learning now? Not just counsel, not just some money, not just assistance, the blessing. In Genesis 12, 2 to 3, 12, 2 to 3, Genesis 12, 2 to 3. It says, and I will make thee a great nation. Someone shout amen. amen. And I will bless thee. Hallelujah. And make thy name great. Amen. It says, and thou shalt be a blessing. Amen. Thou shalt, hold on. It's one thing to be blessed. But your blessing is not complete until you become a blessing. So when Jabez is saying, bless me. He's saying, empower me with the capacity to, number one, have personal results by the empowerment of the Spirit, and then to become an extension of your blessing to my world. Someone say, bless me. Bless me, bless me does not mean give me money. No. Bless me does not mean give me a job. Mm -mm. The blessing of the Lord, you see, is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Listen carefully. The blessing of the Lord is really the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But there is a dimension of his operation that can cause him to rest upon a man. Watch this now. He can rest upon a man huh, in power. And what happens to that man is that when that blessing is upon you, it has an attracting force. This is how it works. Literally, it begins to attract three things to your life. Number one, it attracts men. Number two, it attracts circumstances. Circumstances are living things. They can be attracted to you. <coughs> are we together? And then number three, it can attract opportunities. Is someone learning? Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Someone say bless me. Bless 
Ah, bless me. Place upon my life that which attracts men. Place upon my life that which attracts circumstances. Place upon my life that which attracts opportunities. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone is praying. Place upon my life. In the name of Jesus. When your life is barren of helpers, it is that the blessing of the Lord is not upon you. If your life is barren of opportunities, favorable opportunities, not negative opportunities, it is that you have not experienced the blessing of the Lord. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Now, please look up. Look up. Here's how many people pray. Lord, bless my job. That is not wrong. But that is a very inferior spiritual approach. Lord, bless my, my work. Bless my business. That is wonderful. But the real person to be blessed is you. Are we together now? Because when you are blessed, everything that flows from you also flows with the blessing that is on you. Are we together now? Your business can be blessed and yet you are not blessed. Yes, sir. The prayer is not just bless my business, not just bless my work. Jabez said, bless me. If I say bless my house, what if I leave that house? Bless me so that I become a living extension of this, this, this mysterious spiritual force that can come upon an individual. Listen, I want you to know, I have taught you and I will keep teaching you that what you attract to your life is a function of what is upon your head. It is not a function of what is available. It is a function of what is upon your head. So, someone can step into a city like Abuja here, and in Abuja there are all kinds of things, demonic activities, in Abuja there are all kinds of things, the manifestation of favor, but regardless, look up please, let me have your attention, regardless what the situation is, one thing is sure for a fact that what is upon you is what will select the situations that will come to you. There are people as soon as they show up, in this land you know what happens their helpers start gravitating towards them somebody who would have traveled is kept back it is the blessing keeping the person back to make sure the person must meet with you but there are others as soon as you land in a place the one last person to help you feels an urge to leave that place the person did not just leave something upon you is controlling the possibilities around you i'm saying this because for some of you this is why god brought you here you change your cloth it does not change you change your job it does not change you change friends it does not change you change neighborhood it does not change what should change is what is on your head not what is around you apostle why is this business not working i thought it was because i had wrong partners i brought other partners why is this not this church not growing i thought it was a location now we've gotten a bigger place no that thou wouldest bless me. Someone again say, bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Listen, when it was time for Abraham to bless his sons, the Bible says to all the sons that came from his concubines, he gave gifts, physical things. Then he called Isaac and said, Isaac, I'm not going to give you anything physical. What I'm going to give you is something on your head. And when I place that, you can go. I'm sure Isaac would have felt, what kind of unfair thing is this? You've given people cattle. <laughs> that, it was because of that blessing. The Bible says, and Isaac sowed in that land. Lay your hands again and say, bless me. <clears throat> bless me in the name of Jesus Christ. When I learned this, I, st I stopped chasing shadows and chasing mundane things. When you have a good job without the blessing, it can leave you overnight. You have a good house without the blessing. Something can come and happen to you. You can relocate without the blessing, you will still get into trouble. You can change clothes without the blessing, you will still be in trouble. For many of you, the Lord sent you here tonight 
because this mysterious grace that has come upon ordinary people and began to rewrite their lives you know what it means for a man to be blessed empowered by the spirit insisting that you must prosper not dependent on the economy no you can know the blessing and know that it is upon a man because everywhere you go you define your own possibilities you are never subject to the situations and circumstances and i want you to believe this i'm not just this is not just a preacher's talk you don't believe this the reality that is plaguing our world today will catch up with you he said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it you curse a man that god has blessed you are only wasting your time yes remember when balaam was when balaam was called to curse the nation of israel when he stood to curse them he said there is a formation these people are already blessed no matter what you say they cannot be cursed for someone in the name of Jesus, as a result of what is resting on your head, no matter what the enemy does, they will only be wasting their time. In the name of Jesus. Oh, uh, where do you keep this now? No, no, just keep it. Maybe I should just take a sip and then I can continue. So I know this. Thank you. Thank you. Are we together? Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Genesis 25, let me show you something, 5 and 6. Genesis 25, 5 and 6. And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. <laughs> Verse 6. But unto the sons of the concubines, he gave what? Did you see that now? He gave the children gifts. I'm sure they were dancing. This one gave me a car. This one gave me an estate. And then he calls Isaac and says, Isaac, I'm not giving you anything. Go to verse 5. He says, I want to give you everything I have. That means he did not consider everything that left him as part of him. Because the Bible says he gave... Are you, are you Bible students? So every... The cars, the houses, the cattle. He called those ones gifts. He said, I want to give you everything I have. Kneel down. And he placed something on his life and said if i never meet you again you cannot be a failure go listen god has sent me after the order of abraham this night that in the name of jesus the son of the living god for everyone who has been changing every other thing and everything has refused to change may the blessing rest upon you may the blessing rest upon you please sit down you see, let me tell you sincerely, there are many people who talk about the blessing, but there are few people actually carrying it. The blessing is not a doctrine. It's not a subject of discussion. It's not just an intellectual debate. It is either on you or it is not. And if it is on you, it shows. When God made man, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, the first thing that he said the first word that man heard from the lips of God, the Bible says, verse 28 now, it says, and when God made man, the Bible says, and God blessed them. Say, bless them. It didn't say God gave them instructions. He blessed them. Be fruitful was not an instruction. It was a blessing. It didn't say God told them to be fruitful. No, it would be evil for God to tell them to be fruitful because fruitfulness requires empowerment multiplication requires empowerment replenishing requires empowerment to subdue requires empowerment having dominion requires empowerment so for God to have told them go and be fruitful that would be unfair the Bible says he blessed them he blessed them hmm. he blessed them have you been blessed to get a job or were you just instructed to get a job have you been blessed to do business or were you just advised to do business have you been blessed to prosper or were you just counseled by a financial advisor it's a different thing to be counseled it's a different thing to be advised it's a different thing to be encouraged you see the way the city is now um just try business that is an advice that is not the blessing it is one many people have been advised into the things they are doing now 
and that's the reason why they labor and labor and labor and there is no result please believe me on this there are people who were advised to do ministry and they sincerely went with all their hearts and Jabez said oh that thou wouldest bless me oh that thou wouldest bless me the second thing I want you to know is not everyone can bless you he was not talking to everybody in this prayer because I can imagine that Jabez would have encountered so many people in his life like many of you may have it, it met many people not everybody can bless you please listen carefully only careers of the blessing can truly bless you I hope this does not sound like arrogance it is the truth there were many widows in Zarephath but the Bible says to none was Elijah sent that means other people had encouraged her and yet they were carriers when Elijah met her he said do not be afraid your oil your, your, your water will not be spent your bread will not dry up just make me a morsel of bread and let me eat careers of the blessing careers of the blessing you cannot carry the blessing and not know no there is no assumption it is there or it is not there and you know the presence of the blessing because it is able to attract to your life regardless the economy regardless the demonic tide it doesn't matter whether Satan is in your area or not the blessing does not factor Satan it acts as though he's not there listen this is what the saints carried this is what people like David carried that they could make boastful statements supposedly that yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil someone say the blessing I assure you by God it is not your territory that is disadvantaged I assure you by God it is not because you know some kind of the, no 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 it is that there is something exact that should come on you that for whatever reason if you find that name Jabez around your life sorrow and pain disappointment and shame it looks like nothing of dignity and glory and color comes out of your life the first prayer is not just the casting of demons I'm going to minister deliverance but he's saying oh that thou wouldest bless me second prayer we're still considering that scripture please give it to us media verse 10 now it says and enlarge my coast do you know what it means for your coast to be enlarged Psalm 71 and verse 21 I remember about three years or so ago three or two years ago the Lord gave me this scripture as a prophetic word when I was stepping into a particular season of my life and how true this word has been thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side someone receive this word for yourself thou shall increase my greatness it's one thing to be great but it's one thing for your greatness to be multiplied it says thou shall increase my greatness and then comfort me on every side because greatness has a side effect if you are not comforted on any side greatness can become a curse to you it says thou shall increase my greatness that means you are never at the same position spiritually and in every other area of your life enlarge my coast enlarge my coast give me room to find expression give me room to reveal Jesus in and through my life there are many people who are as small as they've always been no increase financially no increase spiritually there are territories that are still as small as you've always met them you go there and you saw a red biro near the wall in 1981 that red biro is still there you've seen buildings like that you can almost describe there was a stone there when you were a small boy that stone interrupting the junction is still there there is no increase in the name of Jesus I speak to someone whatever has tied you down so that you don't grow so that you don't enlarge I curse it tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost I curse it tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost Oh, that thou wouldest bless me 
and enlarge my coast enlarge my coast enlarge my business enlarge the church you have given me can I tell you this growth is a very powerful sponsor of peace joy happiness and fulfillment one of the six I have taught you here that one of the six indices that measure fulfillment is growth that means you want to know that you are growing and you are making pro progress you are evolving into superior versions of you and you are covering grounds as far as destiny is concerned when your life becomes indefinitely stagnated i assure you no matter who you are you do not have a lifetime patience to endure that kind of state eventually you will be worn out like many of us are right now enlarge my coast enlarge my coast enlarge my coast enlarge my coast increase me oh god even in the knowledge of god enlarge my coast let me have greater revelations enlarge my coast a greater level of possibilities let me know what else is there to explore number three i like the third one jesus that thy hand might be with me do you know what this means I wish I had time I would have taught you about what the Bible calls the hand of God because the hand of God is a very deep profound mystery give us first Corinthians first Chronicles 29 I believe first Chronicles 29 uh, that should be 11 or 12 first Chronicles 29 yes 11 thine O Lord is the greatness watch this and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine it says thine is the kingdom O Lord and thou art exalted as head above all let's read verse 12 together ready one to read both riches and honor come from thee and thou reignest over all it says and it is in thy And in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. So when the Bible says the hand of God is working with a man, look at what the hand of God carries. It says it is in your hand. Your hand carries power and might. It says in thy hand it is to make great. That means when you see people rising, they did not just rise. There is a hand lifting them up. When you see people make progress, they are not just moving from one direction to the other. There is an invisible hand pushing men. He says, let your hand be with me. Because no matter what I have gotten, if your hand is not with me, it has to be with me as a defense. It has to be with me as a guarantee for continuity. Let your hand be upon me. Then let it be upon the ministry. Then let it be upon my family. Let your hand be upon me. The hand of the Lord is mighty. That is what came upon Elijah. The Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. That means when the hand of the Lord comes upon you, there is speed because Elijah ran. Elijah ran. The hand of God cannot come upon you and you walk. The hand of God cannot come upon you and you crawl. Regardless the limitations, when the hand of the Lord comes upon you, it was the same hand of God that came upon Samson that the, it came as the spirit of God mighty upon Samson the spirit of might and the Bible says the wax was like you know the, the, the chain was like wax before the fire let me tell you something ladies and gentlemen behind the mysterious rising of men behind the mysterious forceful advancement of men is an invisible hand moving men my question is, has that hand come near you to move you? Or are you just moving by the strength of the flesh? Intellectually calculating your way to greatness will be a waste of your time. I assure you, not in this wicked world. There is a hand that moves men. Man of God, hear me. You don't just rise. There is a hand. It is good to plan. But if that hand does not come, you will remain there. You will think you are rising. You will soon find out you are just jumping. You know what it means to jump? To jump means that you rise up with the guarantee that you are coming down. 
That's what it means to jump. The hand of God. Maybe there's a man of God here. Maybe there's a family here that really needs the hand of God. You have tried to move forward. You had a family meeting. It's time for us to go forward. Maybe a board meeting in your business. It's time to go forward. Maybe as a pastor, it's time to go forward. It takes more than a decision. A decision is powerful. But I am telling you, behind the mysterious motion of men, the speed of men, the consistency of men, is the invisible hand of this great God. I want you, if you can, listen to my teaching series. I preached it somewhere in the East, Helped by God. Please go and listen to it. I showed three ways there that God helps men. Number one, the ministry of mercy. Number two, the gift of men. Number three, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. This is how God helps men. The hand of God. Let the hand of God come upon that family and you will watch weak people that look like they will never rise step by step. Someone will leave the village and go to the town and come back after six months as if he went to meet a herbalist because the helper, that hand that can move men. Now, watch this. If you ask me to lift this up, what part of my body am I going to use? Is that true? And if I'm limited, I will need another hand, and another hand, and another hand. Either many small hands or one big hand. Are we together now? Yes. I'm not going to use my mouth to lift this. I'm not going to use my feet to lift this. So if your destiny is to be lifted, there is a hand. Unfortunately, your hand cannot lift you. Logically, can you hold yourself and lift yourself? Bazanji Soropa Bazanji Kunyaba That means in order to bring you down, the devil must bring the hand that has lifted you. Most people don't know how mighty the hand of God is. Our little children used to sing a song, he's got the whole world in his hands. That sounds like a special number. The whole world in his hands. And yet that hand comes to pick you. Ah, Jesus said, all that you have given me, I have kept. Kept in my hands. And none is lost except the son of perdition. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying this because God is speaking to someone prophetically. You have come here looking like nothing. You have come here as you, you have become an object of people's discussion. When they are bored and they want to talk of somebody as a pity story, your name is what comes up. But I want you to find faith because there is an invisible hand. The hand of Jehovah that has lifted ordinary men, ordinary people in ministry, in business. That hand will so lift you after this meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. I hope you believe what I'm saying. So the next time you see people mysteriously lifted, guarded, mysteriously making progress, don't ask how it happened. Now you know. Jabez said, if your hand does not come, the kind of pit I found myself in as a result of the curse of my mother, there is no way out. Yeah. You are Ebenezer. You are Ebenezer. The lifter of men. You are Ebenezer. You see, you can doubt a healing miracle and say, was the person really healed? You can doubt some kind of miracle and say, how are you sure? How are you sure the growth disappeared? But you cannot doubt transformation. That someone who came, you, you used to know him, a carpenter's son, now riding in glory. You used to know that lady. You used to know that family with the proverb, Ichabod, upon them. 
and then the mighty hand of God. If you do not believe God lifts men, then um, you are going to have to live a life of pain because it is in your believing that you allow that hand to come and lift you. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this God you see is not only a blesser, he's a lifter. Hallelujah. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast and that your hand will be with me. That your hand will be with me. That your hand will be with me. I like the last part. Listen now. This is the word for this miracle service. It says, and that thou wouldest keep me. In fact, go to give us Amplified. And let's see what Amplified says. I want to read the last part and I want you to really understand. It says, and you would keep me from evil so that it might not hurt me. You would keep me from evil. Because one of the things I'm sure that I've taught you here is that with every lifting, with every mantle, with every grace come challenges. There are many of us, God has not answered our prayer for lifting because you do not yet understand the dynamics of preserving greatness. Greatness will attract anything and everything including Satan. As soon as Jesus was announced, he went to the wilderness and Satan left everything he was doing on earth and went and waited in the wilderness patiently for 40 days until he was done and Satan began to tempt him. Satan is attracted to glory. Satan is attracted to greatness. So when it looks like your family has not been attacked, it's because he believes you are under bondage. But let God begin to lift you. Who is this rising from the east, from the west? Who is this rising from the north, the south? I thought this was a family of idol worship. Who is this prophet that is rising? Who is this lady in the order of Deborah? I thought women don't rise in this family. Who is this one breaking a hundred year protocol? Most people like anointing and impartation for greatness and they do not know that the moment the mantle of greatness comes upon you, you become a prey, you become a principal point of attack. Are we together now? This is very important. Everything around you begins to fight you in your workplace. Joseph was a young man who had a dream and it was clear that greatness was on his way to his life. And the Bible says because the father gave him a coat of many colors, even his brothers fought him. He went down to the pit and went down to Potiphar's house, went down to the prison. But that greatness, once that hand is upon you, even from the prison, it still took him to the palace. Are we together now? This is very important. Some of you have tasted greatness, but you are almost running away from it now because you did not access the defense dimension of the blessing. There is a defense dimension that the blessing brings upon a man. When you are blessed, you have to be defended. How many of you put your um, gold or whatever jewelries and just put it in a plate and drop it outside? Do you see that happen? You have a jewelry box, am I right on that? And sometimes we have all kinds of safes with different layers of security. You put it there and lock it, then tie it, then lock it, then hide it again. <laughs> so when the Bible says that Jabez was praying and said, Lord, make sure that in everything you are, thank you for your hand, but please do not allow evil prevail over me. The psalmist said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. He said, O oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. You know it as a song, but it was a desperate declaration of a man who knew that greatness is always surrounded by evil. Did you hear what I said? Let your family begin to rise and you see what happens. 
who is this woman to rise who is this man to rise what can we do to bring him down what can we do to bring her down if we can't get him can we try the children but in the name of Jesus I declare over someone here the devil will only waste his time as far as bringing you down is concerned men will only waste their time as far as bringing you down is concerned hallelujah now when you rise by compromise you will be afraid of your position but when it is the hand of God that lifts you he stands behind you as a mighty terrible one in other words let me see the person who will change the story of this family negatively again let me see the person who will stop this family from rising again hallelujah when I began to pray and I heard that word Jabez 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 three times I knew exactly what the Lord was saying in that statement to me God was saying who is available for me to bless I want to bless somebody and make that person a spectacle a blessing in ministry that people will sit down and say ah it's not jealousy but my God you mean God can do this with a man God can do this with a business God can do this with the people did your Bible not say I and the children that the Lord has given to me? It says we are for signs and for wonders. Do you believe that? I believe this oh, with all my heart that for the rest of your life, every week is an episode of signs and wonders through your life. And enlarge my coast that by next week someone will come and say apostle look at the doors that open in one week strategic connections strategic opportunities whether in ministry or in business and that thou wouldest bless me enlarge my coast and let your hand be upon me moving me moving me from place to place is that same hand that moves men from May to June it's not time that moves men time can be passing and you are in one place it is the hand that moves you the hand that moves you moves you some of you you are in May now but in the realm of the spirit the truth is that you are still in 2017 you are still in 2018. I, I hope you know that time can pass, but you don't pass with time. You are still remaining there. So physically, you are in 2023, but in the realm of the spirit, the date there that is matched to your life and your reality is many, many years back. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen. The only way to explain restoration for you is how they pay workers area salary. That's the only way I know to help you understand. Have you seen someone that perhaps for 10 years had been old and they were still dragging in court finally the judge gives a verdict and says pay this person backdates the payment from 2010 to 2023 and the institution stands there they don't want to do it but the judge has given his verdict in the name of Jesus for certain of you here within the time that we have and I'm, I'm not just joking I'm not entertaining you that God will see from what point Satan started attacking your family and there are things he will carry from there in the name of Jesus Christ some of you it will be before you were even born that the Spirit of God who's listen the Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne that God will begin to backdate certain prophetic things certain blessings and mantles and graces and open doors
Hallelujah. And there are some of you who have experienced the help of God in many ways. But you came for this miracle service so that God will answer the last part of the prayer. Because the attacks around your life, the physical ones are the least. Because if you know that someone is standing near you, you can do something. But what if you don't know? How will you know that the kiss of Judas was a sign of death? I know that when an enemy stands with a sword, I know he has come to fight. But how do you fight someone who came to kiss you? Don't you know there is another kind of sword that comes from the mouth? Not from the hands. The Bible calls it the scourging tongues of men. Job, he said, in five things God would deliver you. There are arrows that fly by day. There are noisome pestilences. There are destructions. Listen, please look up. I know people that the moment God lifted, they woke up one morning and one mysterious pain. Just when he became a director, headache this morning, next tomorrow the right eye cannot see. In the name of Jesus, every covenant, every coven, every demonic orchestration against your life, by fire it goes down this night. Hear me, can I tell you, one of the greatest ways that Satan attacks great men is through sickness. Most of you don't know. Sickness is hardly a condition of people who are rising in life. Those who are rising in life hardly fall sick. Not because they are healthy. Because at that point, sickness as a weapon will not profit the devil. Listen carefully. I hope that we'll have a series on, on, on supernatural healing and health. And I will teach you something. Do you notice that most people who have not really made it, Satan will hardly use the weapon of sickness because it does not really profit him. The real assignment of sickness is to bring down great people. Read your Bible. Find out those who were sick in the Bible and you will see Job, the greatest man from the East, when Satan tested him. Are we together now? Yes. The moment people become great, the devil knows that at this point you probably will have security people protecting you so attacking you from that angle will not profit him he knows that probably you have influence there are many things money can do but he knows there is something money cannot do and these fiery darts with all the hell things you see someone will just wake up and they will tell you that there is something growing inside his brain within two weeks it has become the size of a golf ball Are we together now? That's why the psalmist said, I lay me down and I slept. He said, I wait for the Lord sustain me. That means it's one thing to sleep oh, as a great man. And it's another thing to wake up. Because when men sleep, many things happen. Satan comes to plant. Hold on. He, he only plants tears among wheat. He does not plant tears on an empty farm. That means if your life does not have color and nothing is growing there, Satan does not come to plant anything there. He waited until the labor of the farmer was now speaking. He waited until the company was rising. He waited until the ministry was now blossoming. He waited until the children were now becoming teenagers, ready to carry the family name. Aha! The moment Satan sees wheat, be careful, he's coming. He's also a farmer, he can farm. I'm saying this so that you can take whatever you want to take. But let me tell you, if it is an attack, that's why we pray for people to be healed. It is more than just showing that a man of God is anointed. There are many, many sicknesses that medical science can deal with it. That is not really the concern, we can pray for you. If you have headache and you can take Panadol and you are fine, you've made our job easier. But we are dealing with the ones that you go to the hospital. The demonic headache that does not answer to Panadol. Because that one is not stress. That one is, is your name being mentioned somewhere. That, why will this man rise? Instead of attacking 30 people in that family, attack this man and let him die. Listen, in the book of Esther, in the book of Esther, sit down for a moment. In the book of Esther, some of you didn't even know you were standing. In the book of Esther, watch this. The Bible says, you saw her man, 
just as a faithful administration an administrator but her man was a wizard her man was not an administrator he was a wizard there was a connection between her man and Vashti when Vashti left it weakened her man but did not destroy him because her man had won the heart of the king and when you read your Bible the day they were to strike the nation of Israel her man used divination to get the date they, they, they conjured the elements, elemental forces. What day will it be to strike these people? But then they said, okay, now that we have it, who and who should we kill? Let me tell you what, what her man's plan was. Her man's plan was first to start with Mordecai. Then after he's, he, he's done with Mordecai, don't think Esther will be spared. Esther would have been the next. After Esther, then the king himself will be the final one. He was already eyeing the king because when the king asked him and said, what should be done to this man? He said, aha, uh -huh. let him wear the king's robe, ride on the king's horse. What else is left? It's only to sit on the king's palace. That means he was eyeing that I'm coming. Let me first finish with her man. Let me show you how Satan attacks. He does not attack the Jews like that. He first goes to Mordecai because it was through Mordecai Esther came. Then when he's done with Mordecai, he would destroy Esther. Then destroy the king. Then become king. So when you see the devil wanting to strike the family, he's not stupid. He will not come and strike everyone. There is a way of gauging people's advancement in the spirit. What one person can we hit in this family that will be the same thing as hitting everybody? That's why some of you did not prepare to come for this miracle service. But God pushed you by his spirit and said, Come, oh, you don't know what June is going to be like. Come and sit down and access grace. Let these devils be driven out. Oh, we have been anointed to do this. Listen, let me tell you, in the name of Jesus, not one strange spirit will be spared tonight. You hear of the testimonies that happen here. Listen, testimonies happen when the spirits that are behind these tragedies give way. Are we together now? Yes. That you will protect me. Jesus, in teaching us what we call the Lord's Prayer, he said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done in F as it is in heaven. Then he says, give us this day our daily bread. Next prayer, he says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He didn't say deliver me. It's a corporate thing. If you pray for deliverance for yourself alone tonight, you are selfish. Deliver us. Because in Africa, if you are free alone, you are not truly free. Do you agree with me? Deliver us from evil. Deliver us. Who are the us? My company, my family, the ministry. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. I've had the honor and the privilege of praying for people. And sometimes, even though I've seen this for many years, I'm in shock and wonder at how easy it is Satan can bring down great people if there is no spiritual and human force in partnership with God that stands as a defense for them. You see, you can rejoice and say, my business is doing well. Go and read your Bible and see how sudden it is that men go down. Are we together? The worst of is when Satan tries and nothing can happen as you sleep. That's the end of it. I remember a lady who sent me a text some time ago that she was sleeping in the night and physically, she felt physically what she told me. A hand came and held her neck. You know how you are strangling someone and she was gasping for breath till she woke up like that, shouting Jesus, Jesus, and nothing happened. And she woke up, literally felt a presence and it left. What do you think demons are doing now? If you were a demon, just as an example, please. If, if you were a demon, what will you be doing now to be efficient? Just think. 
Will you be, you are, yes, you are sent to everybody, but if you were a demon and you want to be productive, what is the wisest approach? To waste your time running around everybody on the streets or to settle down and fashion weapons? The Bible says no weapon fashion. Do you know what it means to fashion? To fashion means to study what you will use that weapon for. So if you were a demon, will you just see someone on the street and start following him? What is your name? Can I attack you? No. You find out, okay, I have an assignment to attack 10,000 people. But out of those 10,000 people, who are the top three that I can bring down first to make my work easy? It is always the strategy of Satan. He looks for the strongest and brings down. That means if you came here tonight, it's because the hand of God has perceived you as the strongest somewhere that the devil wants to attack and God is bringing you, some of you, for the sake of your family members so that you are strengthened, you are delivered, empowered and sent back as an agent with fire and with grace. You believe this? And let me tell you, we're going to do a very quick walk tonight. If there is no time to take testimonies, no problem. But I, I, my heart is burdened because when the Lord told me Jabez, that means at the end of it, honor and glory is what must come out of your life this night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't sit back and allow the devil wreck your destiny wreck the destinies of those around you and say it does not matter i just know that one day go better god is a good god he will change things the bible says jabez cried unto the lord when you become passive you become very very sorry for want of word become very um very organized there is there is a desperation that you must carry the desperation of hannah the desperation of Gideon, the desperation of Jabez. Have you seen a woman going to give birth and she's interested in her makeup? That just when the child is about to come and say, sorry, I, I, I just need to make sure that, you know, this one is in place. Can I have a last look at myself? Huh? Have you seen that happen? There is a desperation. The woman with the issue of blood said, this is not the issue of shame. I'm tired of this nonsense. I will cry it. I will touch the head of his garment. Let me be punished later, but for now. There are some of you who are not yet angry enough. Sincerely, I'm telling you. You are still organized. He's saying, well, the poverty situation is not so bad. At least we can borrow money. Now you are owing more than 10 million. It started from 10,000 naira. And the devil is an expert in growing it. Before you know it, you see that your whole destiny has been given to the company you are owing. Is that not what happened to the wife of the sons of the prophet? Remember, you think that she started by, they were going to take her children as collateral. Your children there does not just represent your physical child. Whatever it is that can make for continuity of your destiny. Satan can use things around your life and force you to carry your future and pay for today with it. I'm, I'm, I'm planting a holy anger in you so that when it's time to pray and it's time to receive, you will do what Jabez did. Tonight is not just to shout amen. My job is to release grace with you and stand in faith with you. But you have a responsibility for God's sake to pray in holy anger. Give us that scripture. Verse 10. The Bible says, and God, and God granted him that which he requested. God granted him not that which he has been admiring in others not that which he, he wants passively i know it but it's just between me and god <clears throat> blind Bartimeo said thou son of david i don't care who else is hearing it have mercy on me and the people said keep quiet you are the one who knows the heart you are the one who knows what lack of employment has done to you 
you are the one who you, you know it's always it's often said that the person wearing the shoes is the one who knows where it is hurting so when it's time to pray don't just stand and be organized and say well I, I know I, I don't want people to see me let camera not pass me you have to deal with certain things once and for all this spirit of death that I'm always seeing in my dreams tonight is the time to deal with it I, I, I reject untimely death but just say no it will not come it, that is a joke you are going to have to place aggression this door that opens for others but just when it gets to me that door closes somebody was supposed to sign something on your table and just because he turned to discuss a wind just push all the files and they can't find it again and that becomes fine what kind of satanic thing is that and you are here keeping quiet and he said does not matter he will find it one day the same wind that pushed it must push it back was it not the east wind that blew that abba listen I'm, I'm i'm planting a holy anger in you father you gave me five children the devil is already taking two. I assure you, Satan's plan is not to take two. It's to take all. He took one and you kept quiet. The Bible says in the early church, watch this, the book of Acts. When Satan took James and the church kept quiet, they didn't do anything about it. He said, ah, the Bible says he proceeded further and he now took Peter and the church said no more. The Bible says the church gathered together and began to pray. The same angels that rescued Peter were still there when James was dying. But because there was silence and they did not pray. The same angels that would deliver your family today, they've always been there. It's just that you've not given it the kind of aggression. hallelujah listen let me tell you something someone once asked me a question I said apostle what does it take to build a global ministry like this and I looked at him with compassion I said which part of the answer now am I going to give this person one of it is a testimony in the spirit that you have mastered the art of keeping evil forces at bay when physical victory manifests is because that victory has been established in the spirit please hear me it is not when your job manifests that god answered you <clears throat> when you deal with it in the realm of the spirit and it's finished you will find out that you can wake up in the morning that's why you see people come for service and sometimes they are ministered to there are a few people who may walk back maybe they, their healing has started and they did not feel anything you know and they may feel disappointed you hear them testify that they went home and slept and woke up because once it is done in the realm of the spirit that is it Goliath died in the realm of the spirit David killed Goliath before he met him there and he said mr. man you are standing just as a mass of interruption I'm going to bring you down even with a stone so when we are going to pray now Please, I want you to pray with seriousness. There are things that you wrote. There are sicknesses in your body. Can I tell you, we are in the days where headache can become cancer, thanks to demons. You will feel a little headache, something that you will just say, ah, it's paining me. The next time the pain goes to this side, then it goes to another place, unconnected. I'm not a doctor, but you will know this is a demon spirit. You hear people telling you there's something roaming around my body have you heard people say that it starts from my head you know how hard it is to move around your body even god had to put veins and arteries and here is a demon spirit walking around freely until you stop it by the power of the holy ghost how about businesses that are going down from january your business has been going down and you've just been watching it thank god for principles listen we are people of principles and we're intelligent people but we are people who place superior honor to the realm of the spirit the physical realm is a child a slave helpless slave to the realm of the spirit if you do not deal with things spiritually whatever effort you are making physically is a total waste of time i assure you if you're a ministry here as a man of God, it is not just by invitation, poster, social media. Those are physical things and they are profitable. The real victory is in the realm of the spirit. Apostle, why is it that people do not like me? I'm a sincere person. Every time someone wants to help me, they seem to forget. 
you think they make themselves forget there are wicked spirits what do you think made the wine presser to forget joseph and added two more years one man's forgetfulness added another man's pain hallelujah how about someone who just received some money that should bless the family and wipe their tears and all of a sudden three people went down somebody needs a surgery five million another person needs a surgery eight million another person has a mysterious sickness that we must fly the person to uk to check you calculate everything is the exact same money you collected someone just wants to help you and the devil will masquerade and use certain faces in the dream to now come and appear as an angel of light and say don't help this person that person is carrying a familiar spirit and your destiny helper gets up in the morning in fear because the devil used your face or used something else to money and you find out that uh, let me tell you africa especially is a place where people respect the realm of the spirit someone can be a very intelligent person he goes to bed and the devil just uses your face you come with a knife in the dream supposedly to kill the person the person stands up and says oh so this is my enemy you go to the office the next day good afternoon sir you are leaving this job now what did i do no before you kill me i will kill you both of you are innocent there is a spirit joining this thing has happened even between husband and wife have you seen it happen that a man will go to sleep a wicked spirit will use the face of the wife and the man gets up and says, no no way not in this house and the devil is just standing stealing killing destroying in the name of jesus tonight by the power that raised jesus from the dead Paraka in the name of jesus christ every spirit masquerading through situations and circumstances to abort the glory of god in your life goes down this night goes down this night goes down this night The same way the Lord can make it happen that someone goes to bed and suddenly he has a dream and it's about you and the person is thirsty and you are bringing water the person gets up in the morning and says you you got a job in this company when two weeks ago come you are promoted to my PA what happened I had a dream oh, and I saw you giving me water and in my mind I interpret it to mean you're a good person ah, life do you know I really feel sorry for people who downplay the realm of the spirit I'm a person of principles there are it's not all about just demons and the realm of the spirit but let me tell you in order of priority the physical realm came as the child of the realm of the spirit that means for anything physical it is only the after effect of something that has been settled in the spirit do you know a true story and then we we'll begin to pray one time the lord opened my eyes and i saw something i saw someone who in the realm of the spirit he had already died but in the physical he was still walking he was still alive but in the realm of the spirit like this person has been buried in a coffin over now that person will be walking yet not knowing that you've been finished anything can kill you including a bike you just see that a bike passed and just hit someone and he fell down and they say both bones broke someone fell children go to pluck mango from a tree they fall from that tree and clean themselves and stand up and climb again and yet someone just fell from a bike and both of his bones you think that is just a fall listen we are god gave us a mind to think but let's be careful so that we do not allow the devil cheat us by just folding our arms when you see evil call it for what it is and deal with it by the blood ah, what is this pain that i'm having mysterious pain and the devil says cancer like it happened to your father like it happened to this and said no it will not happen to me i went to school that's not how the realm of the spirit works you stand there listen there is a way you open fire at the devil huh you have drawn a line 
anything you permit will grow hear me anything you permit will grow you permit failure it grows you permit the spirit of death it takes one step towards your house you turn back in the name of jesus christ this is how believers are taught to maintain victory hallelujah apostle but you know the truth is that the way after the pandemic it affected everybody my business has gone down till tomorrow i agree and i sympathize with you but do you know that for your business to come back it is going to take the favor of god the blessing like i taught the ministry of men have you called the men no i'm sure that god will just make it happen whereas somebody in the midst of that pandemic held on to the horns of the altar and shouted the door for his new level to open up I don't know who is angry in this place tonight but in the name of Jesus I came here to release my faith with you that anything that does not name the name of Christ it must live your life now please open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to declare that in the name of Jesus the son of the living God my life must be a capture of victory total victory total deliverance total liberation he who the son sets free is free indeed by the power of the holy ghost someone is praying every mysterious sickness roaming around my body i curse you by the god of heaven spirit of death i call you by your name and i banish you from my life banish you from my family banish you from my business someone is praying Hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to lead you to pray the prayer that Jabez prayed. Number one, it says, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. As I mentioned them, I will lead you to pray. This is the miracle service. I want you to participate. If you want to hold hands with someone to encourage you, that is, you, you can do that. But by all means, any spirit of slumber that wants you to sleep or just fold your arms and watch people is cheating you. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare that by mercy, let your blessing rest upon me let your blessing rest upon me rest upon my family open your mouth and begin to pray the blessing of the lord that make it rich and added no sorrow the blessing of the lord that causes a man to prevail oh that thou wouldest bless me bless me bless me i activate the blessing upon my life i activate the blessing i decree and declare blessed in the city blessed in the country blessed in abuja blessed in lagos blessed in the united kingdom blessed in south africa blessed in the united states in the name of jesus Man of God, pray. Pray the blessing of the Lord. Pray it upon your spirit. Pray it upon your children. Now pray it upon the works of your hands. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the country. Blessed shall be your needing trough. Go ahead and pray. Outside, make sure you are praying. All the overflows, make sure you are praying. 
in the name of Jesus the blessing is upon me 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 speaking loud and clear speaking loud and clear speaking louder than any curse speaking that louder than any demonic thing minutes you are praying shate ke pakato safras kata bakata kapra teke parako shagates the blessing is upon me prospering the works of my hands the blessing is upon me manifesting as signs and wonders the blessing is upon me turning me into a mysterious sign and wonder The blessing is upon me. Someone pray. Shaleke peketos kata frende ke parusiata. Embra kato kapres kata peketos. Sobanto shodo ba leketos. Ibra to seveze kete ba leketos yata. For in Jesus' name we pray. Ah! For in Jesus' name we pray. I tell you things are shifting in the spirit now watch this do you know what allowed the flood to come what allowed the flood to come was that the blessing was withdrawn and was only it was completely withdrawn and that was the only possibility for the flood to come so when the flood was over watch this now when the flood was over, the flood of Noah now, remember? Everything and everyone except Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives and the animals that were in the ark. Am I right on that? These were the only things that were alive. You find that Noah came out and then Noah reared an altar. You find that in Genesis chapter 8 and verse 21 and 22. He, he carried some of the animals that were left. Some of the animals came two by two. Some of the animals came seven by seven. You will see that even some that were left, Noah still slaughtered them and they died. But watch what happened. When God wanted the earth to increase again, give us Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1. I want to show you the power of the blessing. What did God do to Noah? Same thing he did to Adam. You see, and God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful. Does that sound like something he had said before? multiply that means every time God sees small things what he does to increase them is to make this same thing keep this scripture there because this is going to be your prayer that means in God's mind what it means to be blessed is to be fruitful what it means to be blessed is to multiply what it means to be blessed is to replenish you are not blessed in God's mind until he sees fruitfulness, until he sees multiplication, until he sees the ability to replenish and to subdue. This is God's idea. Every time you hear him speaking a blessing, he will break it down and say, this is my idea of being blessed. Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Are you ready to pray? We are still praying the blessing prayer. Say, Father, as a result of the blessing, that is upon me I speak to my destiny be fruitful multiply and replenish open your mouth and begin to pray I am blessed blessed to be fruitful blessed to multiply nothing remains small in my life by the Spirit of God and God bless Noah and his sons and God bless Koinonia and all those connected to her by prophecy and God bless Noah and his sons and God bless Noah and his sons
and God bless Noah and his sons you can call the name of your children you can call the name of every company everyone who is under your care declare upon them be fruitful multiply be fruitful multiply replenish 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next prayer. I'm telling you something is shifting in your life. He said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. You want to understand this? Let's go to Isaiah 54 from verse 1 and 3. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that did not travail with child. He said, For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Verse 2. It says, Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtain of thy habitation. Spare not and lengthen thy cord and strengthen thy stakes. Why? Verse 3, hallelujah. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Look at me. Do you know what it means to be enlarged? To be enlarged means to grow. That's how we grow. Is that true? We grow through enlargement. There are people who, respectfully speaking, I got to find out a few cases where some people remain children even in their, as adults. You still see them like children, like babies. It's a medical condition that people remain literally. You look at them, their face, nothing changes. There is no growth. There is no enlargement. Yet some of them are 25, 30 years, and they, are still, they have the voice of children, everything around them. And when we talk of enlargement, we're not just talking of physical growth, financial growth, spiritual growth. The level of grace you've been functioning on for 10 years is still the same. The level of favor is still the same. Did the Bible not say grace and peace can be multiplied? Are you ready to pray that prayer of enlargement? That Father, I'm tired of being at this level for a long time. Enlarge me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Spiritually. This level of my prayer life, this level of my word study life, someone is praying, enlarge me by the spirit of the living God. Enlarge me in ministry. Enlarge me. Shapakato parakato shafragades. Krasagata farasko sebelegos. Embrakato shafrandes kalebash. Krateke belegate sefraskati balakosiata. Enlarge my coast, enlarge my coast, enlarge my coast, enlarge koinonia, enlarge koinonia, enlarge my spiritual life, enlarge every aspect of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Shabrakate pekatoska frateke paruskiata, kaprekate peleko sote fraskate peledusiata. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Don't be tired, you'll soon sit down. But listen, please look at me. What is the difference between a one room and a duplex? What is the difference? Space. Am I right on that? What is the difference between a great duplex and a mansion, as you call it? Space. What you can do in a one room, what you cannot do in a one room, you are able to do it in a duplex. Am I right on that? Now, just respectfully speaking, if you have one room, everything is there. 
the kitchen is there the whatever is there are we together smallness has the characteristic effect of constraint it does not give you the opportunity to be efficient are we together now so imagine that you move from one room to a two bedroom now you can convert one maybe to be a library one to be a guest room have you seen people now respectfully speaking have you seen for instance say a couple a husband and a wife and maybe two children and all they have is one room you've seen what happens in the night the father is constrained maybe he even has to sleep on a chair for the wife and maybe the children and maybe the little baby you see that now did you not read in your bible that solomon was judging a case of two prostitutes where because of the constraint of space they slept on their visions and one killed they killed their children because of lack of space let me tell you enlargement is a blessing what 10,000 cannot do 1 million can do are we together now yes oh my man needs to be treated and the bill is 200,000 and that innocent woman is about to die because all you have is 10,000 but when God enlarges you you have more space you can even be a blessing what this level of anointing can do cannot do this level of anointing can do are we together now yes this level of anointing can only lead you to pastor 50 members not to insult but that is what it can do it cannot bring you a global ministry this way no no you cannot put the tire of a tricycle on a tractor or a, a bulldozer or a lorry can that work but they are all tires so when you bring that small tire how many of you have seen spare tires of cars that look very small because you were not supposed to drive with it for a long time is only sufficient to take you to the mechanic you see some of these giant cars and they come with enlarged tires and sometimes when smaller cars are struggling because of the pothole those cars can come and pass as if they are, they are not even aware that's what enlargement does when you are limited when you are constrained five children you are living on 50,000 it's not a blessing oh no. let me tell you the truth not in our world today you are anointed you pray you have to pray for one week for headache to go you can't have a ministry that is flourishing that way I told you people don't follow men they follow results when you are a man that commands that result it will look like they are following you but what they really follow are results it takes a level of dedication and loyalty and training by God for people to look beyond results and now start following men enlarge my coast enlarge my I've prayed this prayer many times this ministry did not start like this and this ministry will not remain like this because that grace for enlargement is there so why is it that your life is remaining that way one more time I want you to refuse look at every area of your life that has refused to grow and declare let that anointing for enlargement rest upon it open your mouth and pray one last time father enlarge me by the spirit of the living God enlarge me by the spirit of the living God for the sake of your glory for the excellency of your name please pray hallelujah number three let your hand be with me hallelujah let your hand be with me let your hand be with me you are going to pray this is what is responsible for advancement this is what is responsible for speed when the hand of the Lord comes upon men 
they refuse to stay not just at that level but even in that location it is God that moves men when you find stagnancy what you need is the hand of God the hand of God moves men the Bible says it was the Lord that caused Moses to advance say father one more time say father in the name of Jesus by your hand advance me by your hand advance my destiny open your mouth and begin to pray by your hand by your hand by your hand advance me in ministry by your hand advance me in every area of life someone is praying advance me advance me by your spirit hallelujah 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 and with the last prayer point it will now lead me to begin to minister as fast as we can. Fire is going to begin to fall in this place now. Give us the last prayer point. Keep me from evil. Listen. The psalmist said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the almighty is that true verse 2 says give us verse 2 i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust verse 3 surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler from the noisome pestilence verse 4 he shall cover thee with his feather and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be. And thy buckler. Verse 5. It says thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Nor the arrow that flyeth by day. Verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. 7. A thousand shall fall by thy side. And ten thousand by thy right side but it shall not come nigh thee. Last verse. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Listen. Do you know what it means for God to keep you? To keep you means, Lord, I will not die before my time. Amen. Hallelujah. I was listening to a video this morning by late Archbishop Benson Idahosa, and he was teaching somewhere in the States and he was just sharing how that when God gave him an instruction in Benin then and he went and he was praying and praying and God gave him an instruction for seven days to go out every night at the roundabout alone and begin to pray and declare and say Benin belongs to Jesus and he said he prayed it the spirit of fear came what if you would die he said in one of the days when you got there he saw parts of animals that were caught and on them his name was written there can I tell you saying I do not trouble anybody nobody would trouble me is a joke all it takes to be a victim of evil is to be born the moment you find yourself here you have to understand the warfare dimension of life are we together now I'm saying this because many of you do not know you are a man of God here I want you to listen daily daily there are demons and spirits it's only when we go to heaven that i will know how many shrines how many pots how many sacrifices carry my name daily but they'll continue to boil it as dinner lunch supper it, it will have no effect not because listen not because we are powerful on our own we have found from scripture that there is immunity in that name that there is immunity in that blood are you ready to pray now say father, father. by the blood of jesus the blood of the eternal covenant every 
covenant tying me to failure to death to weakness to defeat right now by the blood let it be broken open your mouth and pray every covenant every covenant tying me to death witchcraft defeat yokes ordinances no matter how long be broken no matter how long be broken no matter how long be broken every covenant that says people will not rise that says people will not shine hallelujah hallelujah hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching